American Military University, founded by a retired Marine Corps officer to educate those who serve, broke new ground by offering career-relevant distance education for military learners. Today, it is the number one provider of higher education to the U.S. military and sister institution to American Public University, each part of the accredited American Public University system. Both schools provide quality education through more than 200 flexible and affordable online degree and certificate programs that prepare students for public service and leadership in a diverse global society. Now, this is Dr. Chris Reynolds, Vice President and Dean of Academic Outreach and Program Development, and he is here with us today to explain more. So thank you for coming in today. We're good to see you. Good to Happy see you to see you, I should thank say. Thank you very much. Thank you. So what really sets American Military University apart from other crowded online education you know, marketplaces? Mm -hmm. what, what's the difference between you guys and everybody else? Well, I would have to say the difference, first of all, is that we are scholar practitioners. Mm -hmm. In our, uh, you know, it, not just in higher education, but particularly in the online education arena. Okay. Really, the fact that our faculty members or our practitioners in the field are actually out there doing the job every day, mm -hmm. uh, maybe aren't necessarily a full-time faculty member with the university, but they're out accomplishing the mission. So the closer they are to actually doing the task, they bring that real-world experience to the classroom. And most of the students who are also in whatever that field is, mm -hmm. now I'll use the example of emergency management, for example. In fact, look at what's happened here in the last uh, 24 hours, the tornadoes. Yes. And the flooding that's occurring. Our students are on the front line right now mitigating and dealing with those disasters. Hands so, on. Hands on. Mm -hmm. And so are their faculty members. So they bring that experience back into the virtual world and one cannot help but to learn mm -hmm. based not just in the doctrine because we all know we have to have policies and procedures right. but really what happened and well, that makes it different. You bring a unique stance to this because you too are a practitioner and <laughs> educator so there's a unique skill set yeah. that you're bringing to this how does that benefit those that are participating okay. in this program? Well again I think it, it's top down and it's bottom up you know mm -hmm. we hear in organizations how you know organizations only as good as its its weakest link necessarily right, right. we don't look at it in those terms mm -hmm. because we feel that everybody has a, a, a part to play and a, a brand new person that really brings a little to the table in terms of experience still has that desire mm -hmm. and wanting to learn and the mentoring that a senior officer or that a senior emergency manager or homeland security professional police officer anyone mm -hmm. in the public safety arena can bring pulls them to the center and it's 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 almost like an organic relationship that develops and the learning can't help but to occur i was going to say having somebody that wants to learn that wants to take part in this mm -hmm. that's half the battle right there it is. and it makes it easier for mentors and people that are exactly. already there to, to help is. teach it is where does the training, education, and practical experience intersect in critical public policy scenarios like mm -hmm. natural disasters, like the tornadoes that we're talking mm -hmm. about, hurricanes? I mean, it's hurricane season now here. Thank you for mentioning that. <laughs> I actually reside in the state of Florida. Okay. And in three days, we begin the hurricane season. Mm -hmm. And disasters aren't necessarily localized to just one small town. Mm -hmm. They can be wide sweeping, right. as we know, particularly mm -hmm. up here you know, in Virginia, in this area, where mm -hmm. we've had storms that have swept essentially the Atlantic coastline and yes. created flooding and damage. Here to the metro D.C. area, it's occurred. Mm -hmm. The wildfires in the west, the flooding that we just spoke about that's occurred. You know, so the disasters themselves provide the opportunity, for the, the canvas, if you will, for mm -hmm. the learning to occur. The doctrine changes every year because we learn by our mistakes. I mean, let's look at the California wildfires okay. that occurred last year, where we had tremendous loss of life, Absolutely. loss of property. Mm -hmm. Well, that certainly caused a question, do we have to adopt our doctrine? Do we have to adopt the laws, perhaps, that govern what we define as a defensible space in a wildfire? Mm -hmm. And certainly the state of California and their emergency management professionals are doing that. Same with hurricane response, same with flooding. Mm -hmm. I listened this morning to an emergency manager in Little Rock, Arkansas, talk about the flooding that's occurring and how it's a 100-year flood event. Wow. You know, so the doctrine has got to change. So one thing in the intersect for us at American Military University and American Public University is that the people who write the doctrine are the ones who are either our students or our mm -hmm. faculty members. And, you know, that's an that's awesome responsibility to Absolutely, have. to take people's lives into your own hands, yes. literally. Yes, And that brings me to my next question, because AMU, they are furthering the extension of the classroom, if you will, and the experience to a larger public safety community. Mm -hmm. 
How is that outreach going? How are you doing that? It's actually going very well. There's a lot of methods that we utilize in terms of outreach itself. Mm -hmm. You know, outreach is something as simple as a referral. You know, it's like us talking, for example. Right. We're learning a little bit about one another and mm -hmm. what we bring to the table. And it also goes as far as like our blog. We have an EDM Digest blog. Okay, that oh, actually that's cool. I had a part in initiating and setting up about mm -hmm. three years ago, and it's already its readership is you know, uh, it, to give it a factor is 20, 30, 40, 50 times more red than it was when we started it. Mm -hmm. And it's a platform that allows emergency services providers and emergency managers from around the country to come together and share ideas. Mm -hmm. We post thought-provoking articles, we post op-eds, and we want to get that diversity of opinion. Because if all the heads are shaking this way, right. you know, simultaneously, we know that there perhaps is something that needs to change. Exactly. And Digest allows us to do that. And I love the fact that you are social media forward, you know, with that yes. blog, because that way you get everybody involved. Right. Students, future students, exactly. mentors, like you were saying. Exactly. We got to cut it short right now, Dr. Chris, and I'm sorry to have That's to let okay. you go, but please come back and talk to us again. Julie, I really enjoyed it, and thank you for the opportunity. Thank you. Where do we find you get more information? Well, you can look us up at AMU online. Mm -hmm. On, on the web, you can look at apus.edu online, look us up. You can look us up on EDM Digest. Oh, cool. And if you're on LinkedIn, our Masters of Disaster group. <laughs> I like that. What about the blog? Where can I find that blog? EDM That's good Digest. Stuff. EDM Digest. EDM Digest. All right. Well, thank you, Dr. Chris Rollins. It was a pleasure to meet you. Thank you, Julie. Enjoyed it. Thank All you right. very much. More of Let's Talk Live coming up right after the break. Thank Stay you. with us.